Hi there, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AdamyTutors.com and in this video we're going to be looking at interpreting NMR spectra and this is the second video. Now in these series of videos they are uh, designed to basically look at a spectra and trying to work out the chemical that's in it and it's effectively just a worked example. Now um, these would be quite a good opportunity for you to, to practice them as well and then maybe pause the video uh, and then make sure and check that you've actually got the right answer as well. Uh, and what I've done is I've actually put up all the um, uh, shift data as well for proton NMR, which is the one we're going to look at here. Um, so all the numbers that I'm going to use are on the board there, so you can use them as well. So um, I'm just going to basically show you um, what we've got here. So we've got a chemical formula or a chemical with a molecular formula of C4H10O2. And we've got its NMR spectra here. This is a proton NMR. Uh, and you can see that we have um, three peaks uh, and that we have four, we have a, a quartet here, we have a singlet here, and we have a doublet here. Uh, and basically, we're just going to work out um, what the formula is of this molecule, and we're going to use this information here. So we have, um, because the scale is obviously very difficult to see on here, I've highlighted exactly where these peaks sit in terms of the shift data. And then these numbers here uh, represent our integration values uh, for each peak as well. Now you can see that the integration values are not actually uh, whole numbers, so we need to convert them into whole numbers first, and that's our first task. So what we need to do is we take these three numbers here, and we divide each one of them by the smallest integration value. In this case, it's 0 0.4. So I'm going to write this up here. So this peak, we'll call this peak A. We'll call this one peak B. We'll call this one peak C. So if we start with peak A, then peak A is basically going to be 0.4, as we can see, and then peak B, peak B, we said was 2.4, and peak C is 1.2. So what we do is we divide all of them by the smallest value, which in this case is 0 0.4, um, and what we should get is this value should come out at 1, um, this one should come out at 6, and this one should come out at 3. So what that means is we can effectively change these numbers now uh, to have this integration. So that's what I'm going to do here. So if we change the 0 0.4, change these numbers so it makes it a bit clearer. So you can see that peak A had an integration of 1, peak B had an integration of 6, and then peak C had an integration of 3. Now, what we're going to do is now we've done that is we're then going to try and identify what this molecule is. Now, this is really important because this tells us exactly how many carbons, hydrogens and oxygens we have. Um, so we're going to start with this peak. We'll just start on this one because it should shift it furthest, um, furthest up the scale. You can start with any peak really, but I'll just start with this one anyway. So we've got a, a shift at 4.6. Now, if we look in our data, a shift at 4.6 would fit it within this category here with an alkene with a double bond. However, by looking at the molecular formula, you can tell that actually this molecule can't have an alkene because you would have less hydrogens than you do actually up there. So this peak is obviously caused by a proton that is probably surrounded by uh, electronegative elements such as an oxygen, for example, which is in our molecular formula. So, and sometimes it can shift um, further out of its bracket. So it doesn't necessarily mean that we have a double bond, as we can see on there, and it's worth checking that as well. So we're just going to leave that peak for the minute, and we'll come back to it. Uh, we're going to look at this peak. This is quite a significant peak. Uh, it's got an integration of six, which tells us that we have six hydrogens that are in the same environment. Um, and then we've got to look at our shift, and you can see our shift is at 3.3. So if you have a look for 3.3, you can see it will fit in with this type of group here. And this would certainly fit our molecular formula, because it's got an oxygen, and we've got a hydrogen on the CH. Now, what we're trying to suggest is that we have an integration of six, so we'll have six hydrogens in the same environment. This means that the molecule is probably going to have some kind of symmetry. Uh, and you can see here that this group here, just on its own, only occupies three hydrogens. So it might suggest that we have two of these groups, sorry, two of these ones um, in our molecule. So I'm going to write them down here. So I'm going to put CH3. And because we have symmetry, uh, we probably have two of these. So at either end, 
of a molecule. So we have like a symmetrical molecule. And that means that these hydrogens are effectively in the same environment. It also fits as well because we've got two oxygens. Uh, and we have two oxygens in our molecular formula as well. So we've effectively counted for that peak. And if we look at the splitting as well, the splitting will come out as a singlet. So these hydrogens are next door to something with no other hydrogens on, so the N plus 1 rule. Uh, and effectively, these two molecules here will fit that because actually they're bonded directly to an oxygen with no hydrogens on it. So this fits the splitting pattern as well. Okay, if we go on to the next one here, which is um, a, got a, a shift of 1.3, and it's a doublet, um, which means it's next door to one other hydrogen, but itself has got a CH3. So this is basically, and we'll add this in here. So, so I'll put an arrow here, showing these bits. Uh, and so this one is effectively a carbon with three hydrogens bonded to it. So I'll put that on there because it's telling us that we have three hydrogens in this environment and um, but it's bonded it's next to another carbon but it only has one hydrogen on it because it's given us a splitting pattern of two which is a doublet and that suggests that the carbon next to it has only got one hydrogen added onto it okay so that's effectively our potential structure that we could have so this here is to do with mainly these three hydrogens here. Okay, we've also got this spare hydrogen here, obviously, because it's next door to these two hydrogens. So if we come back to this peak again, now we can see here, this one has got a uh, integration of one, which could suggest this hydrogen. But if we check the splitting pattern, this has got a splitting pattern of four, that's a quartet. So that means that this lone hydrogen is bonded, is bonded to a carbon, and that carbon is bonded to a carbon with three other hydrogens on. Now, if we come back to this set up here, actually we can see that we have a hydrogen, it's bonded to the carbon, and this is bonded to a carbon with three other hydrogens. So actually, this fits this peak as well. So actually, we've actually come up with our complete structure. So I'm just going to circle that, and I'm going to draw my arrow to see that this one is because of this hydrogen there. So actually, we've accounted for all of our peaks, but now we've got to come up with the full molecule. Remember we have these two here, these two at the end. This can effectively fit in in the middle. Uh, and you can see that we have two spare bonds here, obviously coming off this carbon here, and they would fit in there. So if I put that there, two carbons, the hydrogen coming off at the bottom, and then a CH3. Now, what you should do, you should always check to make sure that matches the molecular formula. And you can see we have one, two, three, four carbons on there, which is fine. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten hydrogens on there, and then two oxygens. And you just make sure, just double check and go back through your spectrum again to make sure it's there. So you can see we've got this one where we've got six hydrogens, one, two, three, four, five, six. They're symmetrical molecule, they're both bonded to uh, oxygens. We've got some symmetry there, so effectively NMR detects these as one environment, and that's that there. And it's a singlet because they're bonded to no other carbon with hydrogen on it, so that would be fine. Um, we've also got this one here, which is a singlet peak because we've got one hydrogen, and you can see it's there. Uh, sorry, uh, um, an integration of one because we've got one hydrogen, um, but it's bonded to a carbon with three other hydrogens, so that would give it a quartet, so that one fits. Uh, and then we've got the final one, which is over here. Now this has got an integration of three. You can see that's these three hydrogens here, that's their own environment and they're bonded to a carbon with one of the hydrogen on, because we've got a doublet here. So that's bonded to that carbon with that hydrogen on, so it fits, it all works. But just make sure that you check, and uh, make sure it all fits together. And just one final point, if you come back to this peak, remember we said that this one didn't actually fit this alkene, this one has shifted so far high up, um, because this carbon or this proton here is next to a carbon, but it's next to two very electronegative oxygens and they are effectively de-shielding this carbon by a large extent, and that causes it to shift higher up, higher up outside of its, um, higher up outside of its uh, shift pattern on there. So it's just, just be really careful and don't necessarily look at it and and mean that it has that double bond. Check the molecular formula. Always refer back and make sure it's there. But that's it. Hope that helps. Bye.